Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Art 195, um, 3D modeling for computer uh, for animate. Yeah, 3D modeling for animation. Um, this is the fall semester 2021. And where we left off with Mike, we're in, I'm in layout right now. We were um, refining the surfaces and we want to put him in a background and create a composite scene so it looks a little bit more um, interesting inviting and then we should be done after we um the last thing that we'll do is we'll render him and into a still image that we can um that we'll put up on our shared google drive folder so um a couple of things that I need to do, or one thing that I did that I have didn't that I didn't do on Monday, is that in the in Modeler I went ahead. Hold on here. Let me go back to Modeler. There we go. In Modeler, on a separate layer, I put a ground plane underneath. This can be a separate object, or but make sure that it's on a separate. Um, I guess it could be on the same layer. No, it can't. It has to be on a separate layer, and you'll see why in a minute. Is we're going to make this uh, and make sure that it's a separate sur surface, because we're going to use this as a shadow catcher um, to place it inside an image. So let me go back um, to layout, so we can see. Before we um, deal with the background and before we deal with a shadow catcher and, the, and that sort of thing, um, one of the things that we need to do is we need to put his face in here. So to do that, we're going to bring up the surface editor. And I have made the images available for you. And at the end of my demonstration today, I will show you, I'll close Lightwave and I'll show you how I did it in Photoshop. So for those of you who know Photoshop, you can create your own images. Um, you can also create what we ne also need are masks to reveal and to hide certain parts of the image, that sort of thing. Um, let me go back here and let's select the screen. Here we go. So at the moment <clears throat> with the screen, I added some luminosity to brighten it up, look like it has an internal light source. I made it kind of an old CRT kind of blue color. But what we're going to do is we're going to place a, a, a texture on it, an image. We're going to use a projection image on here. And these are the ones that I created in Photoshop. So I'm going to hit T for texture. And you'll notice over to the left, we have layers. So <clears throat> when you place an image on a surface, you have a choice of different projections. Because while this is a concave surface, it's as close as we can get to a planar surface. But you'll notice under here, if we were applying a surface to a Coke can, maybe you would want to use a cylindrical projection. If, um, if it were on a ball, maybe you would want to use spherical. Um, if you wanted um, the same image to be projected on each side of a cube, you would want cubic. You can also use front projection for a variety of things. And then later on this semester, we will get to UV projections. So right now, we just need to concern ourselves with a planar projection. <clears throat> the layer type is image map because we are using an image. The blending mode at the moment is normal. So what I need to do now for the projection is I need to, under image right here, I need to find my image. So I'm gonna to go to load image and I should be able to go inside my folder. Things go smoothly. And um, you can, you should be able to use, um, no, it never copied it inside there. So let me just go into the content folder. Yeah, I don't know why it didn't do it, but I have, three different files here. I have my original Photoshop file, which you do not put up in, um, you, you do not project, um, but that has all the layers for me that I wanted to, that I used to create his, his eyes and his eyebrows and the little highlights and that sort of thing. The two files that we do need though, 
our Mike's eyes and the mask that we're going to use for his eyes. And you'll see what I, I'm talking about with regard to a mask in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the, the eyes image itself. And you can see that it's projected and it's quite large. It doesn't look very good at all. You can see parts of the eyes here. By default, it projects along the Z axis, and that's fine. But we number one, we don't want it to repeat. So I'm going to reset. And I'm going to reset both the width and the height tile. And then what I need to do is if this projection axis isn't working, then you just click between them to see what is working for you. I'm going to leave it at the default for right now. And then what I want to do is I'm going to try automatic sizing right here. And I click, and you can see that that looks pretty good. Um, if I want it a little bit smaller, I can do that. But I'm going to leave it at the default size. It, it just looks pretty decent. <clears throat> um, but you'll notice that because I used a white background, it projects the entire image on the whole onto the whole surface. Well, that's in fact where we need a layer mask to cut away the white. So what I'm going to do to be able to apply that layer mask is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this layer here. This is the Mike's eyes JPEG. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy the current layer. And then I'm going to paste, and I don't wanna replace, I just want to add two layers. And all it did is it duplicated what I already have. But now what I want to do is I'm going to use another image that is identical to this one, but missing the little highlights for the eyes that I will use as a mask. So I've already created that. And as I said, I will show you how I did that when I'm done um, completing this. So now what I want to do for this layer is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click and I'm going to load a separate image. In this one, I want to be the mask. And you can see it's missing the highlights. So all it's done is it's layered it on top of it. And that's sort of what we want, but not exactly. I don't want to use a normal layer. I want to use an alpha channel. So I come under, under normal and I select alpha. And you'll notice what it's doing. It's revealing the background now. That's what I want. But it's the white that I want to get rid of, not his eyes. So what I do is I select invert layer. And now I have his eyes and I have that background image showing through. So that's how we apply <clears throat> um, an image map for his face. Um, that's done all the time to make um, surfaces look very real, is that we use images in place of procedurals. So that's what we've done here. And I think that works really very nice. Okay, If you need to resize this for any reason, you have to remember that each of these have to be resized identical to one another. So for example, if I wanted to resize this and move it around a little bit, um, make it a little bit smaller, I'll go ahead and I'll take this one, this layer, and I will, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. So I'm gonna remove this top layer. So we're back to where we were. When we come back down here, we can check the scale here. I can change the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So if I wanted to make it a little bit smaller, I can go ahead and let's go ahead and reduce it down just a little bit like so along the X. If I wanna make it a little bit smaller along the Y, I can do that, okay? But notice that these numbers are critical because now <clears throat> to be able to make a mask and it's notice it's revealing some of the the blue behind it. So if I stretch it back out just a little bit, there we go. So it doesn't, I don't see that. 
These numbers for the size or the scale, and also we have the position. So if I want to move it back and forth, up and down, if I want to rotate it, I can do that. But these numbers are critical if I use any other layers on top of that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do that again. I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to copy the current layer, paste, and it, and it copies all of those settings that I, that I uh, applied. So now I don't want to replace. I just want to add to the layer. And now instead, I'm going to go back again. Instead of normal, I'm going to select um, alpha. Okay, and then what I want to do, see how the little highlights are there? So I want to switch the image. So instead of, um, I want to make sure that I use the mask image. There we go. And now we invert it. Now I change the size just a little bit. Now, <clears throat> this is kind of like the, the, a very simple version of, of layers, but is, you know, they can get quite complex. You can have as many layers as, the, as you want and create a very complicated surface, you know, an image map that's been applied to a surface or multiple images, in fact. Okay, which, which we'll get into probably next week. So we have him surfaced and we're really ready to go. The next step is to go ahead and put the background image in, make it a little bit more interesting. Now, you can grab whatever background image you want from the internet. Just make sure it's large enough. If you could find one that's close to 2,000 pixels wide, that would be ideal. <clears throat> um, I found one in that I've used semester after semester in classic content. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load it. So to do that, we go to render. Okay. So I go to the render here. Actually, I want to go to backdrop right here. And then we'll use that in a minute. And I'm going to go from once I have, I don't want the effects. I'm going to go to composite here. And I want to get rid of, um, I have a background here that is none. But what I want to do is I'm going to, where it says background image, I'm going to go ahead and load one. You can see that it already shows the images that I use for his eyes, but I'm going to load a separate image now. And this one I did put inside images here. And it's a sandbar image. So I'll go ahead and I'll open that up. And notice how it shows up here. So he, we have him inside our, um, we have Mike inside our sandbar. And you'll notice the reason that I have the, the ground plane is to be able to see his shadow, which actually anchors him into the background. But I need to get rid of the, um, the, um, the ground plane. So before I do, I'm going to select him. So he's layer two. And I'm going to, it looks like he's standing there. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move him over a little bit. There we go. I'm going to keep moving him over just a little bit more. Uh, that's too far. If I turn off, um, let me do this. If I turn off VPR and I just look at textured shaded, it will work a little bit better. So I probably want to take him and rotate him a little bit. Um, that's actually a good placement for him. But to turn him a little bit more, more of an angle. So I'm going to switch from, let's see, let's go to modify and let's select rotate. And I'm going to change the heading of him a little bit so that he rotates just a little bit like so. The next thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that it looks like the angle that I have for him matches <clears throat> the angle of um, the photograph. And I don't know that it does or it doesn't just yet. So let me go back to um, VPR and see how this looks. OK, it looks pretty close. I probably should tilt him forward a little bit. 
So if I do that, I'm going to have to do that for the ground plane as well. So um, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll, I don't want to change the bank, but let's go ahead. And for him, I'm going to go back a little bit. Let's go ahead here. And I'm going to change the pitch just a little bit. Um, change it two degrees. And let's make it a minus two degrees, minus two. So he goes forward a little bit. Well, now that since I've changed him, I need to also do that for the ground plane. And I'll change the pitch to minus two degrees, minus two degrees, so that they match. OK? So what I can also do, make sure that they're lining up with one another, is turn off um, VPR. Let's go to wireframe. <clears throat> And let's go to, instead of camera, I'm gonna to go to the, maybe the right view. And let's look at him, make sure that they're matching up. Okay, so you can see that that matches up just a little bit and it's off just a tad too. Okay, so I'm gonna select him and I'm going to rotate it up just a little bit. No, let me undo. I gotta make sure that I have him selected, not the background. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change the, um, not the heading, but let's change the bank a little bit. Yeah, make sure that it, it looks like he's fit right on there. And let's um, change that a little bit. There we go. So let's go back now. Just a slight angle, not much at all. Let's go back to camera view. Okay. And if I need to, I can also select him and select move and move him back a little bit. So we can go ahead and we can change the Z and move him back just a little bit. There we go, that looks pretty good. We might have to also move the ground plane back just a little bit, because we wanna make sure that when I go back to, from wireframe, I go back to VPR, that we see the shadow cast. And it, it is, it's looking pretty good. A little bit of his shadow is gonna be on the water and that's okay. But now is here is where the magic happens. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and close this so I have my background image in here. And I need to bring up um, the surface editor for the background. So let's bring up the surface editor. Okay. And this is how you combine both. You combine the image with the background because we only want the background to be visible or the, the shadow to be visible. We don't want um, the ground plane itself to be visible. So I'm gonna come and I'm gonna make sure that I have um, the ground plane selected. I named that ground. What I'm gonna do is instead of material, I'm going to use shading model. And then what I want to do is under shading model, it says photo reel. Well, I'm gonna switch that from photo reel to shadow catcher and watch what happens. So now I need to move him back inside the, the image a little bit, but notice what happens. The background disappears, but the shadow remains. We can also take and we can soften the shadow a little bit. We can lighten it. We can do a whole variety of things. So I'm going to take him, I'm going to make sure that um, reboot layer two is selected. And I'm going to move him back a little bit. So I already did move him back along the Z. Let's do it a little bit more. There we go. So he's actually in the scene and not out inside the border a little bit. 
And you'll see also that if, it, if he moves off and you can see where it's clipping, that I also need to move um, the, uh, <coughs> the, um, the ground plane a little bit too and move it back so that all of his shadow is captured. So I'll change that and I'll move that back along the Z too. And you'll see that reappear. So that's looking pretty good. Now, I don't want the ground plane, there shouldn't be any um, reflection there at all. So let me go back to the material. And instead of principled BSDF, I'm just going to make it, um, it doesn't matter what color it is. I'm going to go back and make it um, a standard. And that should go away. There we go. That looks much better. So I have him. I have his shadow in here. And now let's um, you know, do a couple more things that are kind of fun that we can play with with the sun um, to make sure that uh, it looks like the angle of him is the same as the ground plane. We can see his shadow. Um, and we're almost ready to render it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close the surface editor. Um, what else can I do here? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play with the lights. So um, one of the things that we can do is we can change the position of the light. So we can, um, what I can do is I can uh, go back to um, wireframe, if I wish, and not from the camera view, but we can look at it from perspective view. I can also play with it from here. We can, instead of camera view, we can look at it from light view. So we go from light view, from the current light. Okay, that would be not our environment light, but our light. And this is where the angle that the light's coming from. Okay, um, that's one way sometimes to get a really good um, idea of, of, you know, where you need to place your lights. Um, let me go back to camera view again. And with lights selected, and I have my light selected here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to rotate this a little bit and see what happens. So I'm going to go to modify. Instead of move, I'm going to select rotate. And I'm going to change the heading of it just a little bit and see what happens. And because I have this in BPR mode, it's going to take a while for it to yeah, see, I don't want it to go in that direction. I need it to go in the opposite direction. But it, it takes a while for my computer to catch up. Now, the other thing that we can do with this is I can, as I said, that right now the shadow is really very crisp. So what I can do is I can look at lights and I can look at the light properties. <clears throat> and right now, the volumetric distance is one meter. Okay, I can change that. And I can also, um, and it will soften it just a little bit. So let me change it from one to five meters and see what happens. Now, because it is a distant light, it really won't affect the shadow a whole lot. But what I can do is I can change the angle. So I'm going to go back to one meter. I'm going to leave that alone. But this is where by changing the angle from 0.52 degrees and I soften it. And let's increase that a little bit. Oops, wrong way. Notice how it's softening the shadow now. It's not as crisp as it was. It's a little bit more blurred. So I'm going to go back again to what I had before, or close to it, and work in smaller increments. That's 1.2 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and hit 2 degrees and wait for the computer to catch up. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select four degrees. 
And I just want it to be a little bit softer. softer. That's not too bad. I think I'll leave it at four degrees and I'll be in good shape. Now, what I can also do is right now, you'll notice that this is a distant light. If I want, and this would be more important for um, interior scenes, is that you know maybe you want a linear light, maybe you want a photometric light, maybe you want a spherical light or a spotlight. Well, we can try the spherical light, for example. Let's see what example, you know, what we get with that. Now, this is very similar. The sun size right now with this is 100 millimeters. And also notice how it affected um, the rest of him. He isn't quite as bright. So you need to think about that. We need to change the size of that, or we need to go back to, um, we have a fall off and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn that off and that will affect it too. Notice how it's much brighter now. So there's all these factors that you have to take into consideration. You need to play with each of these. The light intensity is set at a, uh, at a default 3.14 lux. So we'll leave that alone. I'm going to go ahead and change the size of this to soften this. Instead of 100 millimeters, I'm going to change it to 200 millimeters and see what results I get. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and change it again. I'm going to um, let's make it one meter. I'm going to really change the size of it and see what happens. And by changing it to one meter, Notice how soft the shadow is. It's not really very crisp at all. So maybe that's a bit too much. So I'll make it 500 millimeters, half that size. Maybe that will be more appropriate. And if I don't like any of these, I'll just go back to the um, distant light that I had. Okay. So, and I can change the volumetric distance. Notice at the angle, everything goes back to the original settings. So I'm gonna change this maybe to two meters. I'm going to change the angle. Um, and I'm, before I said that was maybe four degrees to soften up the shadow just a little bit. And I think for today, um, that's all good. I'm gonna leave it at that. And you'll notice that the closer, I mean, this follows properties that you would see in real life. The closer the shadow is to the object, it is darker and the edges are more crisp. And the farther away the shadow is from the object, the softer the, the edge is and the lighter it is. So now that I think that we're ready to complete this guy, um, we're ready to go ahead and do a, a rendering of him. So, th and that's what you will turn into me. I don't need to see the original LightWave file. So to do so, we need to do a couple of things. We're gonna first, down at the bottom, we're gonna select cameras. We're gonna go to properties. And so what I wanna do to make sure that the rendering comes out pretty good, is that I'm going to use the HD TV resolution, which is 1280 by 720. And I'm going to use a multiplier of 100%. And field rendering, I will leave off. <clears throat> if you want to um, use a multiplier and make it larger, you can. It just takes longer to render is all. So for demonstration purposes, I will leave it at 100%. The next thing that you want to do is you want to change the minimum and maximum number of samples down here. What this will do is it will remove any of the anti, it will, it will um, remove any of the jaggies and add anti-aliasing to it. So I'm going to make the minimum eight and I'm going to make the maximum 16 number of samples. And now what I need to do that I've changed my camera properties is now I need to go into the render properties. So to do that, I need to go up to the render tab. And now I need to look at render properties. 
Okay. And for the most part, for, for right now, I think we can pretty much use pretty much all the default settings for right now. If we want to, um, we can go under, let's see, global illumination. We have by default one ray under global illumination. I'm gonna change that to maybe eight or 10 rays. Um, you'll get a better rendering and, let, and fewer jaggies and stuff when you have more rays. Now, if we were doing an interior scene and we had volumetric lighting, I would want to make sure that affected by volumetrics is turned on. And we would also, if we wanted to, for example, with my gallery, I have enable secondary um, global illumination. Um, we have a number of things that we can change. We can number um, increase the number of diffuse bounces, the number of ray recursion limits, or reduce the number, on and on and on. Right now, noise filter is off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. It help reduce the number of um, noise that we get when we render it. And now we need to decide here, do we want to render shadows? Absolutely. Um, do we want to re um, render reflections? Absolutely, because we can see in the Chrome settings here, the Chrome surfaces, that it's reflecting the ground plane. It's reflecting the sky. That's what we want. Um, ray trace refraction, we really don't have any refraction, so we can turn that off. Render lines, we don't have render lines, but we can leave that there. Render instances, yep. Um, enable lens flares, sure, but we don't have lens flares. And um, we can turn those on, those can be kind of effective if you want, but that will take additional um, uh, render time for us and use um, the, you know, uh, the, or intensify the, the, um, the com you know, the, uh, I'm tongue tied at the moment. It um, will increase the, um, <laughs> the use of the processor. So it's gonna put, you know, uh, take just a lot longer to render, to get all that done. And you may not even see the results that you want for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off render, render properties and now I'm ready to go. It's looking pretty decent. It looks like he's actually in the background. Now you don't have to use the background that I, I've used, but I have made it available for you in um, Google Drive, and it's in classic content. I've also made the eyes available for you when I call them Mike's eyes. So as, I, as soon as I'm done rendering this, I'm gonna switch over to Photoshop and I'm gonna show you how I did the eyes. Um, but for those of you who do not know how to use Photoshop, um, is a, edit, a 2D editing tool, then, um, you're free to use the ones that I provided for you. So to do the final render, now we go over here and make sure that again, you have the render tab selected and you select render frame, not render scene, but render frame. If you um, have taken or you will take um, Chris's um, animation class, you'll use render scene because right? you're going to be rendering multiple frames and save them as a quick time. So I'm gonna go ahead and take render frame and it pops up and you can see how it does a little pre-render here and it's going through it. And fortunately we don't have a lot going on so it's not gonna take a whole lot of time for us to render this. Um, it's not too painful to watch. And it's gonna go through the motions here. We have over 56% of it of the frame rendered. It might slow down just a little bit. It shouldn't be too bad. And once it's rendered, then we're going to save it. I, I, I prefer to save it as two different file types. Um, I like to save it as a Photoshop file. And the file that you're probably gonna send me, you can send me the Photoshop file. 
but you can also just save it as a JPEG and that will be fine too. And you can see now that it's done, frame is done at 100%, I can select abort. And here is the file that you're going to send me. And so what you're gonna do is you go to file and here are all the different file types in Lightwave that you can send it as. Send it as. Well, I'm gonna start by saving it as, as I said, a Photoshop file. So I'm gonna come down here to, let's see, here's the Photoshop. I'm gonna just save it as a 24-bit Photoshop file right here. And I wanna save it inside um, my images. So let me go back to, let's go back to content fall 2021. I'm going to go inside images. And I'm going to name it um, Reboot Mike. Mike, and I'm going to name it um, 01. Okay, so that's the first rendering. And if you're not happy with it, then you go back and you do it again and again, and you can tweak the lighting, tweak the surfaces as much as you want. Um, let me go back again now. And I'm going to go back to file type again. And now I'm going to save it as a JPEG. And I'll name it Reboot Mike. Oh, one. And I can name them the same because they have a different extension. If they had the same extension, I would have to give them a different file name. And we are done. That's Mike. Any questions before I move on to Photoshop? Because I'm gonna close this up. Um, so far my computer is working okay and I don't want it to get all sluggish when I'm showing you how to create the eyes and the um, um, his eyebrows and the mask for um, the layer mask for Mike. Okay. No, no questions. Okay, then I will close this. I'm going to make sure that I save everything. So I'm going to go back to file and I'm going to say, whoops, I want to go to the file down here. Save. And I want to say, save all. So I save the scene and I save um, the object. Okay, so I'm set to go. It looks like he's anchored in, into the scene and that's what we're going for because my background is more fine art and also an illustration. Um, I like to kind of create a story that goes on, that, that goes with these characters. But later when we do the toy assignment, um, there will be a different kind of environment that we will use that um, showcases the product. Okay. So for right now, let's go ahead and I'm going to quit all of this and we're going to go to Photoshop. And then when we're done in the next 10 minutes or so, um, we'll call it a day. So I'm going to quit. And again, I'm going to quit. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to quit the hub. And now I need to open up Photoshop. I have the feeling that um, when I have too many applications open and um, I'm broadcasting this to you using Zoom, that it's too taxing on my processor and um, just everything bogs down. I'm still not quite sure, but sometimes I have a lot of things going and everything works just fine. And other times, uh, not so much. So I'm gonna go ahead and as soon as I get Photoshop open, I'm gonna go to file open and I'm gonna go to my desktop because I don't want to go to my last exercise. I just want to go to my desktop. And I'm going to go to Content Fall 2021. And I'm going to go Inside Images. Or actually, actually it, it's not there. Here are Mike's eyes, PSD. 
So I'll go ahead and open that up and show you how I did that. So let me move my little image over here. Now, <clears throat> for those of you who know Photoshop, um, what I chose to do is I used um, shape layers or shape, you know, shape layers here. Um, instead of rectangle, I use the ellipse tool. So let's look at each of these one at a time. If I turn this off, here's his eyebrows on one layer. Um, if I look at the ellipse one copy, that's off. If I look at ellipse copy two, that's off. So I put each of these on separate layers. And if I turn this one on, this one has his, um, the highlights for his eyes. So when I save it like this, um, I go ahead and then this is the basic image that I'm using for the uh, planar projection for his face. And I just save it as a JPEG. So we can do file, save as. Okay, I'll save it on my computer, but I'm not gonna save it, to show you. And instead of a Photoshop file, I will save it as a JPEG. And it's not gonna allow me to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to collapse it. So I'm gonna use it a different way. I'm gonna to go to file and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to export it. So I'll go ahead and export and I'll use web legacy. And I'll save it, um, the maximum number is a JPEG and just go ahead and save it. And it will automatically add the correct extension, okay? Um, now for the mask, I don't want the little highlights on his eyes so that I turn that off and I save this as a JPEG again, but I make sure that I name the file <clears throat> that this is Mike's eyes mask, that that's his, his, his mask. Now, how I did this, um, let's go ahead and turn off all of these. And I'm gonna select the top layer here. And I'm gonna go ahead over to the ellipse tool down here. And I wanna make sure that shape is selected and the fill, I have a black fill and no, um, uh, no stroke. So now I can go ahead and I can click and I can drag like so. I'm using approximate sizes here, something that looks about like what the image has. So I'll go ahead and I'll fix it. Now I can use the move tool and I can move this wherever I want. And notice that when you use shape layers, it automatically creates its own layer here. So here's ellipse three. Well, um, his, his left eye is identical to the right eye. So I can go ahead and I can copy that layer and then I can go ahead and I can move the other one over. Now if I wanna shift it over so that it's perfectly horizontal, I go ahead and I do that. Okay, I just hold down the shift key and I can come back here and let's go ahead and move this over a little bit, a little bit farther apart. And now I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and create highlights for that. So again, that's an ellipse tool, but it's going to be, let's go ahead and select the ellipse tool, but the fill this time is going to be white. We'll select white. Nope, I didn't wanna do that. Let me undo. Let's go ahead. There we go. Let's deselect there. I need to make sure that I have. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new layer just so it's not going to use that layer, but that'll allow me to select the ellipse, the ellipse, and I want it to be um, white fill. So, now to make it a perfect circle, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna hold down the option key. Whoops, here we go. And here, just the shift key. Click and drag. And there we go. This little tiny ellipse. Go back here. Now let's move it into position. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this again by copying the layer and then move it over. 
hold down the shift key to constrain the movement. Right. So now I have his eyes and I have the highlights and I can turn the highlights off when I make the mask. And now I'm ready to um, use the pen tool to make his eyebrows. And those um, might take me a little bit longer to make but because we're running short on time. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool here. And I'm going to go ahead and click and drag like so and click and drag 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 and now i have to clean all of this up so i'm going to go back and i'm going to use the direct selection tool now the mistake that i just made Okay, it's filled with white. So let me go ahead and double click on it and change it to black so I can see what I'm doing here. There we go. But again, I'm gonna use the direct selection tool. I'm gonna to begin to select individual anchor points and I'm gonna to start to move them around a little bit. Then I'm gonna take the little tangent handles and soften these a little bit so I can get the look that I'm going for. I want this to be pretty narrow. Dead end. Let's move the handle over like so. Let's go ahead and change this. And I'm gradually kind of tweaking the shapes and the points until I get that eyebrow look that I'm going for. And I guess I need to make the other one kind of curve too, don't I? So what I can do, um, if you're not familiar with this, I can come up here. And I can go ahead and I can add an anchor point. So let's add one here. And let's add one here. Let's take this one, go back and use the direct selection tool. I can move this one up a little bit. Move this one up. So move this up. Let's change that a little. Pull this down. And before you know it, you have something that is workable. Now, this isn't exactly what I would want. This isn't workable to me, but um, you get the idea. It would have been helpful if I had um, used the other one as a guide to have something for reference. So, you know, you can use photographs. Um, you don't have to use these tools inside Photoshop, I could have used Illustrator. Now, what did I do here? Um, I accidentally, there's this one. Now, oh, I see what I did. I accidentally, if I look at um, paths, I kind of screwed up here. I, I'm gonna go ahead here. I'm gonna go back to layers and I'm going to copy this layer again and move this over. Whoops. I don't want the direct selection tool. I want the path selection tool. And let's move it over. There we go. So now we're ready to go. So this one here, we're all set. Okay. So that's pretty much how I did that. Um, if you have another way that you would rather hand paint it or if you have a photograph or if you don't understand Illustrator or Photoshop at all, um, as I said, I've made these available for you. So if I come back to, um, here we go. I'm gonna make, show you where they are. So in our Google Drive folder, 
if I look in um, Art 195, you can see that I have ancillary files. So if I open that up, here are Mike's eyes. So you have um, access to this. Here's the Photoshop file. Here is the um, JPEG for the mask. And here's the JPEG for his eyes. So that's set to go for you. Now, if you're looking for classic content for some of the background images, <clears throat> um, I, you can double click here and we can look under classic content again. And I want to look under images. Hold on here. There we go. I want to go under images. And if we scroll down here, we should be able to find. Um, photographs. So if I look under here, under P, element O P, photos. So this is where I got that one. I got the, um, we have a river image and the one that I got was the sandbar. So if you wanna use the same images, you're welcome to do so. And just download them and then utilize those. Okay. So that's pretty much it for today, folks. Um, if there aren't any questions, I will um, say goodbye. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pause the recording and you guys are free to go, okay? This will be due next week. And next week I will um, introduce the toy assignment and I will also um, begin showing you other tools and techniques that you'll want to know about for future um, assignments and give you a, a, a broader understanding of LightWave and the tools that are available to you. Okay, so I'm gonna say goodbye and I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording.